Sudbury's best hit TV show, Life on the Rocks, with your host, Connor LaRock. Today's featured guest in the hot seat is one of my old and good friends, John Lalonde. How you doing, man? Pretty unbelievable, man. How about you? I'm doing really good today. It's an absolute pleasure to have John on the show. So for anyone who doesn't know, he is one of the owners of Sessions Ride Company within the city of Greater Sudbury. This business alone actually is ranked, so it's the top bike shop within Northern Ontario, correct? Yeah, right by Sudbury Cyclist Magazine. Okay, awesome. And what was the other term you told me right before the interview? You guys are, so the premier ride, you call it the ride shop, right? Yep, we call ourselves, um, well, we've kind of been labeled um, the rider's choice shop. Okay. For Sudbury. Um, kind of came along by <laughs> just working with people, right? Definitely. We're uh, a very community-oriented company. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the community. People come to us for things they need. And, I mean, myself and the other owner, Tim, both in our 20s, spend a lot of time biking, skiing, snowboarding. So um, riding is kind of what we do. Uh, business, we're definitely business as well, but business definitely. comes second to uh, riding and doing what we love. That's huge because I think getting into the market, especially being, you know, an active user, like, or, or using, you know, bikes and all that other stuff makes it that much better when you're dealing with products and then you can better relate to your, your customers <laughs> and clients, right? But let's start this off. Uh, what got you started in business? <laughs> well, believe it or not, I was going to school um, right after uh, high school. I was going for health sciences and uh, it seemed it wasn't quite for me. Um, ended up just working in a sporting goods store uh, in Sudbury. Worked my way up there, and um, before I knew it, kind of reached a cap. Um, there wasn't a whole lot more I could do in Sudbury working for someone else. Definitely. So I moved across the country to where the action sports team itself starts really thrives, and was able from there to learn a lot more. I uh, was able to learn under bike techs that have been teching for you know, 30, 40 years in Whistler. was able to learn um, from boot fitters from France. was able to learn um, quite a few skills from people from all over the place. I uh, stayed there for a year. And then happened to, was, was planning to move south in BC. Okay. And um, as things happened, I came home for a couple months before I was to move down south and ended up getting stuck in Sudbury. No, uh, that always happens. Hey, Sudbury, you'll always, <laughs> anyone that leaves, you'll always come back. No. Always, man, always. So um, was here, and we just, I was talking to Tim, my partner, and okay. we kind of decided, you know what, if we're going uh, to be in Sudbury, uh, we're gonna make we're gonna help make Sudbury someplace we want it. Uh, so we started working with uh, the Wall Mountain Bike Club. We started working with Espanola Ski Hill. We started working with the local Nordics, um, Nordic ski teams. Yeah. Um, really trying to push Sudbury and really trying to push for uh, more activity all around. I think that's huge too, especially within Sudbury. If you look at it, it's, uh, the landscape, you know, we, we have so much diverse land. You can go within, you know, with the mountain biking, with skiing, eventually cross country. <laughs> I mean, we don't have the biggest hills. We're not going to like Whistler kind of thing. Uh, but I think we have so much thing and you have such a potential market, especially. So I'm glad that you hopped onto that because I want to ask, so did you, you know, when you said Pinnacle Sports, is that similar to what your company's like or was it, did you integrate? Really so they right? were, they were business that was in Sudbury. Okay. Um, they closed down, I guess, a year and a half ago yeah. or so. Um, when they did close, it just, it left um, a hole in Sudbury. Mm -hmm. um, now there was a hole in Sudbury before that even. It's just, there wasn't really um, anyone young that was, pushing sports Definitely. that was pushing sports um, from our point of view so when we opened um, we made our goal to work with the community and do something that maybe hasn't been done yet yeah, in Sudbury, for sure. so um, I mean it's it's been good so far yeah um, it's all word of mouth it's all um, social media exactly, it's all yeah. pushing that kind of stuff that's really made it work for us well I think too especially if you have some great brand equity you see sessions ride company I see it all over online now you know what I mean when you're doing your marketing uh, give me, give me the name, or give me the idea behind the name, rather. Sessions Ride Company. Where, where did this come from? Was that your so, idea? So, <laughs> there's a term when you're out mountain biking, for example, right? You're riding a trail. There's a very tricky section in front of you. Uh, say it's a big, big rock, and what you do is you session that section. Me, I go right over. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. let's say you're gonna, you're gonna try to ride that section. You don't make it the first time, right? So you keep trying and trying and trying. It's called sessioning the trail. Um, you keep attacking that one section until you make it over. And once you make it over, you get to the next hard section and you do the same thing. So that's kind of something that's always stuck with me and it's kind of a philosophy we live by. Just keep trying to move like and keep going forward. And then Ride Company best explains what we are because to call ourselves a sporting goods store, it's not necessarily what we, we do. definitely sell sporting goods, but we're a lot more than that. We're Absolutely. a company, a group of people that will that have a collective interest. No, I like that too, and you can expand with that too as well. It's not like, oh, we're just sporting goods and we deal in all these different aspects. And you've also ran some events within the city, right? A couple. Do you run them or is it spo are you sponsor so some or you run or sponsor? We do all of that. Um, we did the Northern Ontario Outdoor Expo nice. this year at the Mention Conservation Hour, wow. which is very nice. We had a couple bike brands out. Um, our whole goal, as opposed to having 
just different events throughout the community, whether it be like bike events or whether it be um, skiing or skiing events or different shows, having them all under one house to make it so that there's more of a crowd drawn and better for you know, businesses to reach out to people, but also better for um, potential clients that just want to explore different avenues. So Absolutely. that worked out well. Um, also, we do a lot of events for sponsoring local racers. We work with uh, the race teams. We you know, work with the Wolf Pack, the Walden Mountain Bike Club, the race team. We work with the Sudbury Nordic Racers, um, just about every avenue we can. No, I like that, and especially too, like you said, like there's other businesses, you got Sport Check in that, but no, one, no one's going to go to Sport Check when they see Session Dry Company, right? That's the way I would see, especially, and it's kind of supporting the local atmosphere. How important do you believe that is coming in, you know, supporting the local atmosphere, getting involved well, in the community? It's huge, right? Like we have, so our whole, to give you an idea, our whole mindset's a little different. We don't, like, we don't picture ourselves when a customer comes in just selling something. For sure. Hard sell. There's no, there's none of that. We're, more building a community is what we're trying to do, and then servicing our community. So by servicing people, when someone comes in and say they need, they need something, we're going to get them what they want, as opposed to selling them something that they may may be satisfactory to what exactly they Absolutely. need. Absolutely. Right? Just like so, here's a bike, it's like this is on sale. Yeah. Exactly. So by servicing people, it makes it a lot better. But then it moves forward. We get by building the community bigger, right? We get more and more people in, and that makes more and more service for all of them, and there's more. By getting everyone under the same house, we can help reach other people that may or may not be in it and just keep gathering people in until eventually we have a lot of people riding bikes or skiing or whatever Absolutely. it is um, within Sudbury. Well, there you go, and you'll be in within Sudbury, and then you expand your business, right? You'll go on, and maybe you'll go into other cities and, and other places, possibly, right? <laughs> One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Well, that's <laughs> One it. Thing at a time. I just want to give some context to you guys, anyone else there uh, out there watching. So, me and John were talking probably about a year ago. I remember when he just started. John is a huge hustler in that regard. He's out there. How many hours do you work a week? Seriously, let's talk for a second. Lots. Lots. Yeah, because Lots. You're con this guy's constantly working. I love that. You know what I mean? <laughs> These are the type of guys I'm looking for. If I'm hiring, if I'm doing something like that, it's like, who's the guy out there in the trench, or the girl, rather? Um, how many people do you have working within that vicinity? Are you oh, just myself and Tim. Are you just hogging it? I was going to say, are you just hogging it? You can't help it. you got to uh, work. Myself yeah. and Tim, man. It's, um, we're we're going to, at some point or another, we're going to hire someone, but mm. it's different, right? We want to have one-on-one um, -on -one experience to the customers Definitely. for now. And then we're going to grow, and as we grow, like obviously we'll be hiring some staff, but in the meantime, we'll get to be a little bit picky. And yeah. you know, myself and Tim are in our 20s, so you know, if we're pulling 17, 18 hour days, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> no, no, exactly. I don't think that's bad at all, too, especially when you start off like that. It's like, well, why would I go hire someone when I can do the work? And, and that's kind of the entrepreneurial mindset. I want, me to, I want you to walk me through that for a second. So do you consider yourself obviously an entrepreneur? You're owning a business. Do you see that? How do you find entrepreneurship in today's age? Um... That's I a tough one. That's a loaded one. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I just think a lot of people are, are too hesitant, right? People don't want to pull the trigger. There it um, is. That's the big thing. Like, when I was originally opening, um, like, there was this big toss-up between, you know, going back out west, staying here, what was I going to do? And then I feathered with the idea of, uh, you know, opening up. And I remember talking with Tim, my partner now, and I was like, hey, man, like, what if we, like, just opened a scooter shop? out of the back of a trailer in my truck, and like, Tim told me, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, so we're feathering with the idea, until eventually one day, we just there was an opening, there was an opportunity, and we're like, gotta pull the trigger, have a business. So it was literally, you know, two weeks, we pulled the trigger, and two weeks later, we had a, I had a shop, um, we had, you know, different accounts open, we had bikes coming in, bikes going out, two weeks later. So it's just, I think a lot of people now spend too much time planning absolutely and not actually doing any planning exactly we call them entrepreneurs out there <laughs> for the people sitting back and, and i find it's the same thing the same context where you know i was in that same boat i'm like oh where am i gonna go and then we had i had a first failed business like i wouldn't call it a failure that we learned yeah. uh, but it was that same situation where all of a sudden when you start getting into that trench you start doing that work all of a sudden opportunity comes all of a sudden you have another contract you start kind of moving from there what would you argue is the most difficult part of your business or just being an entrepreneur or business owner um balance i mean like it's it's all right for me because i'm you know 24 you're right out there right? like me you know, well you're 24 I live with my girlfriend got a dog no big deal, oh, right? no, yeah. it's like you know it's, it's it's pretty straight it's pretty easy but if, if you were balancing multiple things i think that would be the tricky part um i mean it's not i think the big thing is just getting over the fear of originally pulling the pen and pulling the trigger and jumping into it. And once you jump into it, I mean, you're in, you're just, you live the life, right? There's no Absolutely. turning back at that point. Would you argue that the passion is everything, especially because you can tell yeah, you're so passionate about it? I mean, sure. 
it's like you're not going to start a business unless you have somebody else running that side of it. And if you don't like it, you know, I'm, that, that's where people always ask me the same thing. It's like, because you're a very energetic guy as well. You, you carry yourself. I see yourself in the gym. You're jacked right up. I'm jacked right up. And a lot of that comes from that passion. That's what's going to give you that thing. And I think too many people, like you said, they're wasting their time saying that, well, maybe I can do that. Well, what if they judge me? What if they do this? There's like so many variables when at the end of the day, just get it done. Go in there. Yeah. I mean, like we're... <laughs> Like, especially when you're young, right? When you're young, you don't really have a lot to lose. So you might as well give it a shot. Um, I think there's a lot of people like, and as honestly was my, the biggest thing for me was moving out west. Mm -hmm. um, everyone I had talked to was like, oh, you know what? I wish I would have done that when I was younger. I planned on doing it. I never really did it. I never pulled the trigger. And then you just kind of have to do it. And it's really easy once you do it, but you got to pull the trigger. And the same thing applies with everything we do, right? And once you do it, you can't turn back. You're in. But for sure. Just to, Pull that original trigger. Do, do you have any advice for anybody out there? Maybe to like, what is maybe a technique for you that's something psychologically you use to pull that? Trigger? Keeping the um, keeping the customer informed. Absolutely. Right? So, um, so like, it's really easy to you know beat around the bush or you know not give the customer a straight answer. But for us, it's very you know, hey, if something's going wrong, if something's um, delayed, if something, if there's some kind of issue, it's making sure our customer's in the right place and making sure our customer's aware. Uh, we've done stuff as far as like you know stripping parts off our own bikes to make sure the customers out oh. there. We've done stuff as far as like you know giving the customer another bike to ride in the meantime or whatever it may be uh, for the situation. But number one is making sure the customer um, knows that first. we're there for them, right? Absolutely, like we're here to service them, and if we're not servicing them properly, um, that's that's a big problem. No, exactly. So that's number one, and then number two is like you know, making sure we actually get this stuff in, or whether it be like whatever the situation is dealing with that, but making sure. The customer is taking care of his number one priority. No, I think that's real. That's huge. And, and I want to talk for a second because we're going to cross over into the marketing skit for a second. But so where do you where do you pick up some of these distributors and like get some of these contracts? So if you're let's say with the, what is Norco bikes? We don't do Norco. Okay. But um, we do a Cannondale, KHS, Apollo, oh, no. NS, um, tons and tons and tons of different brands. We do a lot of very specialized brands. Is what we try to do. Brands that are very um, good at they what they do. So for example, NS is a company that builds dirt choppers. Okay. That's what they do well. So we bring in the dirt jumpers. We do BMX companies from specific BMX brands. We do mountain bike companies from specific mountain bike brands. And it's because we know this stuff because we ride. We spend, yeah. you know, seven days a week riding our bike. We start to realize, you know, hey, this is the what this is what's gonna be best for our customer, this is what's best for from this company because we've ridden just about every bike in the catalog. Absolutely. I want, I want you to walk me through this is a different question. Yeah, no, it makes sense and, and it really actually does. But are you just like Talk me through the fear for a second. Are you ever scared when you're flying down, you know, on your bike on the hill, like that you're gonna go right over the bars or you hit something? Like, that's a, it, like, it's one of those things. So, like, you know, obviously, you know, me and come from a martial arts background. You do actually as well. For anyone who doesn't know, he comes from a martial arts background too. But, but walk me through that when you're going down the hill. Like, how do you kind of get over that? Yeah, you fear? just think about that. You know, yeah, I mean, I can't. Fall. If I'm up yeah, there, I'm like, I'm gonna go over the handlebars, you know? You know? And I keep, it's something I tell everyone in my girlfriend laughs and I tell her, it's just, just don't fall. And um, it sounds really hard, but like, as long as you keep your tires underneath you and your handlebars pointed the way you wanna go, like, you should be fine. Um, sure. It's not looking around at the cliffs on either side, that's kind of the trick. Um, <laughs> don't think about falling, you probably won't fall. Exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah. where's the craziest place you've ridden or rode? And it was in, out in BC? Yeah, like out in BC. But, <laughs> so surprisingly. Um, we've done a lot of riding. I've <laughs> done riding in Whistler, I've done riding in Revelstoke, I've done riding in Kelowna, but um, Sudbury's got some gnarly, gnarly, gnarly riding. Um, we really? do this. So, Walden Mountain Bike Club, um, they have a social ride once a month. It's every third Tuesday. Uh, we go for a couple beers, go riding, and then we end up back for a couple beers, chatting it up. It's a good time. But they go to different areas all around Sudbury. And um, we went to one ride where it was, we started at MIC and we rode these trails behind Silver City. And they were phenomenal, like really bare wow. rock, super exposed, very aggressive trails. Um, there's Sudbury has some unbelievable trail riding that's been tapped into, but not fully, like not fully known yet. Yeah, no, which, is, which is um, unbelievable. That kind of gives you a spot where you can scale it yourself, right? You don't have to worry. It's like it's not all chopped up or somewhere else is just chewed <laughs> up, right? Exactly. I want you to walk me through this for a second. Let's go into the mental aspect here. I know they're completely two different elements, but what's more difficult, extreme biking or on the skis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like which one's uh, harder? Like it, it, especially yeah, from the line. Right? Yeah, um, it's different though. So the skiing is awesome because um, you get a lot of speed. You can commit really easily because you're on ski hill. Um, you fall. It's not as bad, probably. You know. Yeah. But in Sudbury, we don't have. Well, there's definitely a couple opportunities to do some backcountry skiing, but not a ton. Uh, the thing about skiing or snowboarding is you're restricted by the um, 
the time on the hill, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, the hill closes at four, you gotta get up the hill. Uh, unless you're riding street or you're doing anything like that, but that's a different ball game. But just just your average skier. With biking, you can get on a bike any time, right? Exactly, um, yeah. Coming in the fall, we got headlamps, we do night rides. Like, even when it's really hot out, like now, we start doing night rides, riding when it's cooler. Like, you can, the, the riding possibilities are endless, which is a lot. It's something that you don't necessarily get in skiing, but that being said, with skiing, you can commit a little more because you're on a ski hill, you're a little more safe. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I just was thinking about that for a second. You know, you get two extreme sports, which one comes in the middle. All right, let's change gears for a second. So I want to talk here about marketing, for instance, obviously, because it's one of the most <laughs> important parts of business. I had Don, Don Larson on the show last week, and she was talking about how it's all about, you know, different behaviors, right? Yeah. You're stringing emotion out of people. What are some of the, what's some of your marketing strategies? Are you focusing on you know Facebook ads? You said you're very heavy on getting in the community, going to events. How important? Not how important is that? How effective is that for your your business? Um, it's everything. I mean, so we've done lots of we've done lots of um, different forms of marketing, and myself actually, I'm pretty well versed in um, marketing myself. Did a lot of research and whatnot. Uh, be, be, before talking to you, you're really good at it too. I see. Uh, by the way, we we're before we we're talking, just so everyone knows, like, yeah. oh, sorry, not to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, go but, ahead. Um, we uh, spent a lot of time doing a lot of research, doing a lot of um, just reading textbooks, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, reading Opal Goatsky's books, reading tons of different stuff, and then applying it to what we're to our social media, which has been pretty good. I mean, uh, I give a lot of that credit to Tim. Um, he he yeah. spends a lot of time on social media, a lot of time on Instagram, um, but a lot of what we do isn't running ads. It's just again part of the community, right? Like we. Uh, we spend a lot of time riding with people. We post photos of them riding. We spend a lot of time working with different clubs and stuff like that. We post their stuff. And through that, people can see, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I saw you guys at this event. I saw you guys at this event. I saw you guys at this event. And, you know, my friend knows you. And then I go running with this guy. And he's talking about you guys. So then they come in. Uh, and that's what we're starting to find more and more of. You know, we've got, we started, you know, we, <laughs> we ended up kind of getting uh, into the road scene and then getting into the triathlon scene because we sponsored a racer. The racer uh, was on the triathlon team. The triathlon team was looking for a sponsor. Sp sponsor came in, and now the word spreads from there. Um, it just the key is to not burn any bridges Definitely. and be totally open to everyone, totally open to everything, and always be servicing people. Right? Never the hard sell. Never telling someone someone something that may not be true. That Absolutely. you know, just to kind of reach sales. sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Use car sales. Yeah, 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 no, no, that's so it's cool. uh, yeah, and what, the more we move with that, I mean, like we get people coming all the day, all the time. Like, yeah, I heard about you from this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy. Um, play around with a little bit with radio. Um, it's it's good too. Um, but I mean, like being social and using social media um, huge. is huge, man. It's especially with the kind of business we're running. That's great too because you can see where you're coming from an organic approach for the most yeah. part. Obviously, you're gonna do a little bit of Facebook ads here and there to boost the numbers, but I mean, even what you've done organically is significant. You know what I mean? The whole like, I, like even for myself, like I'm always looking into different trends and things going on, and uh, you could tell the significance you've had in the community alone. Even starting those own events, you're gonna go and I mean, it's only been you're you're basically only a year into business, right? A year in uh, year change. Year in Canada Day. Wow, yeah. seriously, a year in, in Canada Day, and look at where you are now. It's been good. And yet, and honestly, it's been treating you good. So I want you, I want to back this up for a second to close this off. It's, it's important. I want you to lead the audience first, and we're not closing this yet, but what are some huge key points that you've given <laughs> to people in life? Like if, if you're coming in, so you're coming from an extreme background, you, you got your education, but yeah. then you went into business. For anyone trying to make that entrepreneurial leap, what is it, John? Like what are, what's some huge advice you give them? I know just do yeah. it works, but what is something you can give them? I mean, like there's, I guess there's two different kinds, right? You get the kind of person that's, you know, got the entrepreneurial spirit in the sense of like, hey, you know what, I just want to do whatever it takes to make a buck here and there. Um, that may not be the kind of person I could give advice to. The person I can give advice to is someone that's got a big passion. If you've got a passion and something that you want to do for the rest of your life, there's no reason to not do that. Um, I can't remember who it was that told me, but someone told me a long time ago that uh, as long as you're good enough at something, you can make money doing it. Um, you know, there's guys who juggle for a living, right? Yeah. They, do that and they make half these money. It's just you have to you just got to do it and you got to do it wholeheartedly and you can't look back absolutely you got to pull the trigger and if you don't pull the trigger then you can't then it's <laughs> i mean uh there's nothing that can be said after that right it's just a bunch of missed opportunities i know and that's when you sit back and you're gonna sit back with a whole bag full of guilt and, and all that other stuff it's kind of funny you mentioned this i want to mention this to the audience out there uh, i'm reading a book currently right now it's called expert secrets it's one of the big hit ones in the personal uh, personal development field yeah. <laughs> sales all that stuff it's by russell brunson and uh, he never seen, he was, he was taking marketing at school and he actually started uh, his first company was potato guns. He became the potato gun expert and literally made millions after, after that, you know, and it just goes yeah. to show he pulled the trigger, he found a niche <laughs> in the market 
And just for people out there, this is something John utilizes too. It's like you have your big market, you have your sub market and niche. Get into that niche pool, the one that's not full of blood from all the sharks coming in, and right? And that's what yeah. you did. There's no one in the city of Sudbury doing what you guys are doing. They can't capitalize on the market. Look at how successful you become. And this is the first year, and your numbers, I can imagine, are through the roof. Pretty good. That's what I mean. People are showing up. That's that's the main thing, and you have a lot of brand equity established with that. In your closing remarks, John, what can we expect from you and Sessions Ride Company? Huh? Another business book, maybe? <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? You know, uh, yeah, your own yeah. bike? Like, no. um, you can definitely expect a lot of weird stuff. Um, <laughs> it's good. We're um, we're definitely doing some weird things at the shop. So currently, we've uh, we've actually just partnered with Old Rock. So nice. we have uh, we now have a coffee shop in the front of our shop. So if you do want a coffee, you're more than welcome to come by and grab a latte or espresso. Um, we have the Tour de France on every morning. Um, we're there at seven. Show starts at eight. We have that going until about eleven thirty. Um, we actually have also partnered with the Nickel City Barber. He comes in uh, once every two weeks, every month, uh, and cuts our hair and all of our customers' hair in the back of the shop. That's cool. Um, so we're doing all sorts of weird, different things that, um, if, I mean, if you follow us on social media, you'll see it all come up here and there. And um, we're, very, we're trying to create an event calendar right now that can help bring together all the different aspects of not only what we're doing, but people are doing in the community, so you can find that. Uh, and that's all available on our website. No, I like that. And, and for that, I think that's actually really interesting. Nothing wrong with the weird stuff because it kind of gets everybody involved. Yeah. And then they can see, like, some everyone <laughs> likes coffee, right? They're going to show up there. They're going to do that kind of stuff. Uh, give them your social media threads, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that, so that we can check <coughs> it out. You're so, also tagged in here. Yeah, we're Sessions Ride on Instagram. We're uh, Facebook slash Sessions Ride uh, Facebook. Um, our website, SessionsRide.com. Um, you can find just about everything on there. If you Google us, we'll come up. I like that. Anything, any closing remarks, Sean? Drop it right there. Let's go. No, I'm just kidding. Not a time. Um, I mean, honestly, I think we've kind of got everything out there we need to say, but if you have any other questions. And where is your shop primarily? So we're on Notre Dame, right across the street from the big yellow silos. Uh, so we're not, we're pretty hard to miss. We've got the bikes out front, big paddleboard out front. So uh, you definitely can't miss us, that's for sure. Absolutely. You're doing an exceptional job, my friend. Seriously. Honestly, I, we went to high school together. Look at him. He's killing it. That, that's, that's why he's here. I love Thanks it. Thanks for having me, man. Anytime, brother.